In this example, we're going to be finding the null space and the nullity of the same matrix that we had in the last example, 2, negative 3, 1, 5, 10, 6, and 8, negative 7, 5. So as a quick reminder, the definition of the null space of a matrix is going to be the set of all x's such that a times x is equal to 0. Now with that in mind, this is done relatively straightforward. First thing we do is figure out the appropriate size of x and it's going to have to be a vector in R3. We'll be representing it as a column matrix to make sure that the uh, multiplication makes sense here. Now all that this means for us is that we'll be taking the matrix A and augmenting with the zero vector. Then we'll take this down to reduced row echelon form and interpret the result. So with that in mind, Let's go ahead and do exactly that. So 2, negative 3, 1, augment with 0. 5, 10, 6, augment with 0. 8, negative 7, 5, augment with 0. Now from the last video, we saw that reduced row echelon form did have a row of zeros at the bottom of the matrix. So let's see what happens this time with everything in place. So heading into the matrix menu, I'm going to go over to the edit. And I do see that we have the matrix in here left over from last time. We'll change this to a 3 by 4 and make sure that all of the augment is simply the 0 vector. Then we'll double check and make sure that everything got inputted correctly. First row looks good, second row looks good, third row looks good. Okay, so now I'm going to ask for reduced row echelon form and I'm actually going to remember to convert to a fraction this time. So reduced row echelon form of A and then math, enter to say convert the answer into a fraction. We'll press enter one more time. I do see that we have a couple of fractions in here. <clears throat> now all of the rows are going to be relevant for us this time, so we'll go ahead and hold on to all of them. So interpreting these appropriately, the first column represents x1, second column represents x2, and the third represents x3. We can interpret this as x1 plus 4 fifths x3 is equal to 0. Second row tells us that x2 plus 1 fifth x3 is equal to 0, and the third row tells us that 0 is equal to 0. Now with that in mind, that means that we have two lead variables, x1 and x2, with x3 being our free variable. So we'll define x3 to be our free variable. Normally we could just say, let's call it t, I'm actually going to refer to it as 5t so that we can clear out some of these fractions. Then what we get for x1, we would uh, multiply by 5t to get plus 4t, subtract it over to the other side, we, we would get x1 is equal to negative 4t. And from the second equation, multiply 5t times 1 fifth, we get just t. Subtract that t over to the other side, we get that x2 is equal to negative t. Now with that in mind, that means that our null space of a is going to be equal to any vector of the form negative 4t, negative t, 5t. This is where t represents any real number. We could also set this up as now a basis of the null space, which would be just the single vector negative 4, negative 1, 5. Essentially just what you get when you factor the t out of the representation of the null space. And finally, this allows us to get the dimension of the null space of A. Also known as the nullity of A. The nullity of A would be the dimension of the null space. I see one vector in that basis, therefore this thing is one-dimensional.